Hello, my name's Sean and um, I'm a late 40s guy who's um, always been interested in collecting old things. Um, I went for a stage probably sort of 15 years ago maybe, maybe 20 years ago even, of collecting um, old computers. Um, not really added anything to my old computers which um, are happily stored away in the loft. Um, though I do hope to sort of get these old computers out over time, fire them back up again, make sure they actually work because they've actually been in storage for quite a few years. Um, what I, the reason why I'm doing this video is um, something caught my eye the other day. Um, it was a computer for sale on eBay. Um, Advertisers not working. So um, I thought, well, okay, um, it's comprised of quite simple parts. Hopefully I can get something going, you know, eventually. Um, so I figured let's just open up the parcel now and see what I've actually bought. So uh, let's have a go. Now, I think it's actually been packaged in the original box that it came in. <laughs> We're going to find out if that's right or not. I'm cooking rubbish. Um, okay. Maybe not. Maybe this is a different box. We shall see. So, looks like the, um, the seller's been kind. Wrapped it up pretty well. I mean, it is shocking how um, some things are packed up and arrive. Um, I've bought mobile phones and things in the past and um, you know if you buy a job lot sometimes they won't even um, wrap up each each phone separately you know they let them um, scratch them scratch themselves um, so which isn't good especially if you're buying stuff to fix and then you want to um, You know, you want to sort of sell things later. Okay. So I think there's a join there. Am I right? Gosh. It has been well put together. Sometimes there's no easy way of getting into things, so you just kind of find your way, find your way around things. Ah, okay. So it's a box in a box. Looks quite old to me. So this says receipted parcel, the Royal Mail service. Back when the Royal Mail was um, was a full national company as opposed to private now. Okay, so. Now, it's actually in a box the same sort of size as a couple of other computers I've got. Um, I've got an Auric um, Atmos computer, which I think the box is slightly bigger than this, and um, a ZX81, a Sinclair ZX81, which is I would say a, a similar size to this. Okay, so we've got some polystyrene packaging here. And let's open this up. Right, anything else on the box? It just says JBS Mailing Services Limited, Stanhope Road, Camberley, Surrey. GU15 URL. What could have come from there, I wonder? Okay. Aha! And there we have it. So, it's actually up in um, London this last weekend, um, sort of live about an hour's drive away, and um, visited the Science Museum, and uh, they happen to have one of these in a display cabinet but looking at it first impressions it looks remarkably clean 
Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any booklets with it. We've got standard 9 volt DC power supply and an aerial. Now this will be old school CRT TV um, for the best sort of picture. So um, maybe if, if I if I'm brave enough to fire it up, then we can um, we can plug it into the TV. And there we have it. So this is yeah in remarkably good condition. Um, I was reading about these and. Um, they were saying that the cases are almost made from the same material as yoghurt pots. Um, I don't think they probably are, but um, they could be as kind of flimsy. Um, now this one's got, it looks like a heat sink, but actually there's no, um, well heat vents, but there's no vents there. So um, maybe that's just for the look. The keyboard, oh it's actually um, smooth. This is a bit different to ZX81. I think the ZX81 um, had, yeah, a little bit more sort of feeling on under the, you know, on the keys. So this is, um, yeah, I guess the ZX81 keyboard was what you could call like a matte um, effect. And this is actually um, like gloss. So a bit like the old school photos when you had a chance to decide on gloss or matte finish. Um, this would be a gloss. What's that said? Integral functions. Oh, okay. So we've got a character string peak. Um, and oh, I wish I had stronger glasses and I could read that. <laughs> I think it's Eliza, so that's a memory operation, I think. Um, STR string, TL string, RND, code, and ABS. Wow, that is amazing. It's not even screwed in. It's just held together by clips. Okay, I'm just gonna give this a quick sniff test um, just to see if it smells fishy. <laughs> well, I wanna say fishy if it smells um, potentially you know a bit smoky then maybe things might have overheated let's, let's just give it a sniff no I can't really tell um, I'm not sure it's ever had any ram pack on it because it looks reasonably clean so th this is different to the ZX81 in that um, you've probably seen these controls here where well, you've got basically um, power um, one is like an earphone and one is a, um, a microphone connection so you'd connect this to a cassette player um, you could load um, into the headphones and then you could well am I getting that wrong around the wrong way now let's think about that <laughs> so um, yeah so the mic would have been a mic out to allow you to save to a cassette deck um, and then it would have had an input um, which would have allowed you to play from a um, a tape and a power supply and then this is of course um, old school um, video or TV signal so well a tuner it would have gone into an analog TV so uh, does it mention what channel no well I'm amazed actually because um, it's hard to see sometimes visually what these things look like um, and uh, it's really clean it's got a little bit of discoloring there maybe that's just maybe that wipe I don't know it might just be age but that is really something okay so what I'll do now is I'll go and get a TV plonk it on the table and uh, switch it on to see uh, see what happens from there okay so moved around to the other side of the table um, 
hopefully we're going to be okay with the length of these wires. There we go, that's the aerial out. I don't think there's a no, there's no power button on this, so um, let's make sure I plug it into the right one. Yeah, so on the back it actually says, I don't know why I couldn't read this before. So on the back it says two recorder, mic, and then ear, and then next to it is uh, nine volt DC in. So um, let's plug that in. Okay, all plugged in. Immediately, we've got something on the screen. Now, this is old school. So we're going the right way. Right. Let's go this way. This may be, you know, may not produce anything. Um, it is the first time. Switched it on. Oh, I expect someone watching this knows the um, the frequency I should be trying to tune to. Maybe I was close to it originally. Oh my gosh. I thought I saw something there. There's definitely something there. Even this telly doesn't seem to be. I thought I could see a cursor on the screen and it would have been in the left corner. Really faint. What was that button there? Can't even remember how this set worked now. Apologies for this taking a little while. something there but it's it's encouraging um, it's encouraging in that it's obviously putting something out um, possibly on the video side it's something that needs replacing Oh wow! <laughs> Explain that to me then. So I press the key, and it seemed to lock it in. Okay, let's press. Keep pressing. Okay, rub out. <laughs> um, oh, it's shift. Okay. So. Anyone watching this who's got ZX80, is that quite normal to um, not be able to lock into the picture until you press press the key? So that's, um, oh, it's been such a long time I've used these um, the keyboards. Okay. Hello. So it's got the, um, the standard sort of Sinclair um, one key keyword input. So that's why I'm able to um, type a very small program in, not very quickly as well, granted. Um, and then run it. There you go. Well, 
I think as far as um, luck is, luck and also good fortune, I think um, that was a remarkable find on, on eBay. Um, I won't say in the video how much I paid for it, but um, it, was, um, it wasn't a huge amount, not considering probably a few years ago when, you know, these computers were anything between 300 and 500 pounds to, to purchase. So this, this was significantly cheaper than that. Um, maybe because there are kit forms available um, of these um, in a, on a new board. Essentially, I think that, that there's a company out there that um, are, are producing um, replicas of these, but with modern um, sort of video out and stuff. Um, I've not really done too much sort of research into it. Um, but maybe that's kind of sparked the interest among the enthusiasts, but also made it less um, de desirable for the older machines because they were quirky and they had um, lots of things that could, pot could potentially go wrong. And I think the main thing with the ZX80 is that um, it did suffer from, um, you know, heat um, issues. So there wasn't any real ventilation in there. And I think some people adapted the cases so that they, you know, that they could um, let the thing breathe a little bit more, um, which I'm not going to do. I'm not going <laughs> to... Essentially, I use it for a small amount of time um, each time. Um, I won't leave the computer on for too long. Um, but I think, yeah, I've been um, I've been very lucky to uh, to find something like this. And um, I think perhaps in in a future video, I'll see if I can um, get an old cassette player going and um, and see if I can um, do some loading from the cassette into the uh, into the machine. Um, so. Um, and vice versa as well you know so yeah we can sort of try testing the functions out but for now i think it's been a good result i mean the buttons i've pressed on the keyboard seem to be working fine um it's obviously had very little use and um yeah i think i've uh, i've hit gold with that so um thank you for um taking time to watch this video um any any questions or any advice that you can give me um, about looking after these about these machines? Um, I've got the ZX81 um, as well, which was actually my first um, introduction into computers at the age of sort of 10, 11. So um, yeah, the ZX80 is one of those iconic looking machines, and I think um, with the speed of everything and the speed of change um, it's easy to forget sometimes where where things all kind of started and um, you know I'm impressed by this machine and um, I think it's you know it is almost you know a hand, hand me down um, for future generations and I've got a I've got a young son and an older daughter and um, you know hopefully uh, later on I can uh, I can make them appreciate these things <laughs> a little bit more. So um, yeah, so thanks for looking or watching, and um, I'll um, I'll do a video again soon um, as I learn more about the uh, the machine. Okay, bye for now.